get this going here. This is Auto Body Man coming live from my garage. Today I'm going to show you how to put Bondo on a helmet and cover up some holes that I'm going to be using to uh, fill in. Uh, what you're going to need for this project is some uh, sandpaper. I got 80 grit and 120 grit, but I still have that one or 220 grit for this project. You will also need a respirator so you can see what, so you don't get the dust particles in, in your uh, face when you're trying to do this. Normally I've been shooting this from, with the door open, but apparently uh, because of the sun glare, uh, I'm going to try opening the door slightly. Oh wait, I locked it. Helped if I unlock it. Like so. Let's move my bench around here. hardener, got my sandpaper, my sander that I'm going to be using, I do have uh, a putty stick so I could uh, use this properly here, and oh good, you can see that the garage door is open, let me show you this helmet, if you notice, it's a little rough. This is where I put Bondo on, started sanding on it. You can see some lines probably like right through here, 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 here. This is where I've put the Bondo on. Notice I started trying to cover up these holes here. If you look on the inside, let's see if I can get this flash to work. Ah. You can see on the inside that I covered up the holes. I'm going to be covering up the holes on here in a little bit. I've also covered up the holes on here. Let's see if I can get on the inside of the helmet where you can see. Oops. Yeah, the holes on there are filled in. This is going to be a demo helmet. So I'm going to basically, with the this helmet, I'm going to be sanding on it. I'm going to be basically filling in the holes and just making it to where we can actually hydro dip it all at one so we don't have to worry about any nicks or cracks or anything else. I'm also going to be sealing it, but I'm not going to be doing that today. Let's put the sandpaper in one table here. This is my 80 grit. This is what I'm going to be using to sand this rough rough stuff here I'm trying to get smooth as what I can then I'm going to go over it with a 120 grit afterwards and then when I get this to as smooth as I want it to get I'm going to put some more bondo on here and cover up try to finish covering up these holes all of them the best way to do that is to take some duct tape I forgot to do so this is how not to cover up the holes and try to fill it in. It takes forever. So if you if you do it right, what you do is put a piece of duct tape in the middle here on the in the on the bottom of the holes here. So if, when you go to fill them in, they can fill in properly. So let me get my mask going and we can start sanding on this. Let me get out some of my 80 grit here. And always, if you're under the age of, I would say 15, or under the age of 15, I would recommend a guardian or a parent to help you with this. Let's see. So I can get three pieces from this. So what I'm going to do is fold this sheet. It's also cheaper to get it this way. Overdo it. 
You can always use scissors to cut this off, up, but I'm not going to. I left my scissors on the inside of the house. I like this type of sanding, but now I like better than I like the other type. Because in a way, I have more control over this sander than I do with a uh, hand sand or with a mobile sander. See, I got my sandpaper on here. Now I'm putting my mask on. Always make sure it's a proper fit. when I did that. That's what, I, what the test was for. We're getting to the smooth part that I need to get to switch sandpapers. So I'm going to keep sanding on this to get this as smooth as right here, basically. So I can take out the majority of the hard work. That's what the 80 grit does. It takes this rough stuff that I have down here that I haven't touched yet and turns it smooth. Smoother than what it used to be. It gets off what most of it that it the hard part is so I can get down to using the, the lighter stuff but I won't go to, down to the 120 until I get all this rough stuff for the most part away so it can be smoother than what it normally is. I'm trying to get it as smooth as this part of the helmet that I haven't even started yet that's why I'm covering all these holes and 80 grit will help me get to the point where I don't have to uh, keep sanding on it as much with my 80 grit. 
So that's what I'm currently doing. Uh, I will be looking at the comments in a little bit. Other than that, I'm just going to be uh, finishing up this helmet and to the point where we can actually put more Bondo on. And always make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. This is why I'm doing it in my garage, not inside the house, because there will be fumes from this. This is why I said you should wear a respirator when you do this, because the 80 grit does take off a lot of Bondo and uh, a lot of sanding Bondo, because when you're trying to get it to a perfection, what you're trying to look for is feather edging. What I was talking about last video is basically make it to where it's flush with the original paint. And basically, when you get to that point, you're good for that for that grit. I know I'm gonna have to start filling in some of these uh, pit holes that I have on here, like these two big holes. Still, I'm trying to cover these holes up. So what I'm gonna be doing after after a while, after I finish getting the rest of this to the point where the rest of it is feathered out, 
I will apply, be applying another coat of Bondo because it will need it. And I hope you like the stream. If you do, please hit that like button. And hopefully you would like to subscribe to some more stuff.
dust myself off for a second. Bring this over to you all to show you what I've done. If you look now, let's see. It's not as rough as what it used to be. With a little bit of time that I just did, I just carved out as smooth as it will ever get at the moment. Smooth. There used to be lines here, 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 here. Even if you go down to the paint, it means it's going up, coming, carving out left, yellow, soft. If you notice, right here, if you look, there's a lip. It means it's, it's not cut down the way I want it to. There's also, it feels rough like a lip and that's not good when you're doing this because if that lip was still there when I went to go paint it will show up in the paint and I don't want that so I'm going to sand this down a little bit and then we're going to start in on a uh, putty coat and always make sure that there's high if there's a high point that you that you feel like right here there's a a, a bump I have to get this down, it's about like this right here. There's too much uh, Bondo here. I could feel a, a definite bump. It goes all the way like this. That part I need to smooth out as best as I can before I put another coat on, because if I don't, that's also gonna appear out in your paint. So, let me move this up a little. See if I can readjust here and try to get the rest of this done for you. I'm still using that cross pattern where I'm crossing like this and then I'm going back over like this so I can get that nice round feeling that I want to get. If you notice, there's a lot of dust here. That's from just the, the Bondo. That's the reason why I tell you to wear eye protection, use some proper uh, equipment like masks, dust masks, or anything like that. I'm using a 3M mask because I also paint. This is the recommended pe recommended uh, for painting and multi-purpose. I got these, I can get, fil I get replacement filters for these every, if I'm painting and doing all this work, I do this once a week. I replace these filters. I try to replace these filters once a week as much as I can. But I'm not doing that much Bondo work, so I can replace these filters once every month. So, um, the, no, the way that you found out you need to replace these is when these turn dark gray to a blackish color. It means you're not getting the acquired oxygen you need to, to stay, uh, to keep the dust out of your system. So, basically dust will... Uh, accrued in your system and it will actually act as a poison. The reason why I use a respirator. Dust masks are really good. You can throw them away after one use. I just like respirators better because I was, as an auto body man, you tend to need them because you do a lot of body work in them anyways. Not just body work, you also paint cars, you also weld, but the welding doesn't need this type of mask, it needs a different style. You need a full facial mask so the sparks don't hit you and you don't get blinded by the, the uh, glare of the, the weld. So, and if you have any questions about what I'm doing or what I have done, please leave them in the comment below and I will get to them after the stream. I'll answer them to the best of my knowledge, which I know a lot, so I'll try to answer them in the, in the order I receive the comments. So I hope you have a nice day if you have to leave early of the stream. So uh, I know there's people that need that have lives and, and needs to live them. And I hope you all have a blessed day and nothing goes wrong for y'all people. But right now I'm going to start back on sanding on this part and the other part I was telling you about when I was trying to show you.
This is an interesting twist. Instead of this being this section that I was telling you about being high, I found out by just feeling it right here after I got done sanding it a little bit, this part between my two fingers here is low. It means whoever built the helmet did not feel what they were building and it has a flat spot here. Right through here. It's a low spot. You can tell by, uh, let me get closer here. Okay. You can tell by, if you see this part here, this is the Bondo. Right here is the original part. When I feel here, there's a high part here and a high part here means there's a dent, there's a flat part here that's not supposed to be here. That's why this is filled in like so, so well. The Bondo feel, filled in all this right here. And it's still high here on this side here. So I need to knock this down a little bit more and actually get it to where this is flush here. There's like a couple things here, but I'm going to go back over it with uh, a Bondo here. I also go back with Bondo here and here, fill these holes in the rest of the way, and then re-sand this to where this isn't showing like this anymore. Here. You could tell by when you go to feel it, go like, like over on our surface. If you look over here, feel how smooth this part is. But when you go over here, there's a dip. It means on the inside here, Somebody didn't, th this helmet was hit or something. It means there's a low part right here. The reason why we're trying to get this smooth is so when we go to paint it, it's not going to be lit or wavy or uh, wave little bumps. If you can see, if I look real closely, there's a lot of little bumps in this spot here means I try to cover this whole space in because it was uh, knocked in a little bit. If you look at the lip here, it was like that. I was trying to make it smooth. That's what I'm going to have to go back over with a slightly a little bit more uh, Bondo over it. Make it nice and smooth. And then do the same thing down here. I'm going to sand this a little bit more before I put Bondo on it. So I can get all these nicks out of it that, uh, that we don't need to have in the paint. So the paint doesn't peel up on us when we'll, when, when we're uh, putting paint on. So other than that, I'm also going to fill in these two holes here. This is just a demo helmet. I'm going to keep it like this, basically. So when I do paint this, I'm going to paint this in a marble fashion. 
gold, and probably black. Uh, leave in the comments section below if you want gold, black. Uh, let's see. Gold, black, white. Black, black. Uh, blue, royal blue. I can get almost any color. We could try to do another hydro dip, and I hope you all like it. Sorry that you're looking at my stomach here. But when I went to go strip this helmet the first time, I found out there's a lot of different things wrong with this helmet. The reason why it's taking me forever to get this helmet to perfection is well as the perfection I want, want it to be at. I want this to be a high-end perfection job. So I'm trying to get this perfect, or near, near perfect. So, uh, let me get back to the grindstone here and finish this up so I can start bombing.
uh, this piece is done being used. And we're down to doing the bundle work now for this particular section of this video. Right, let me put that up for now. Hopefully that doesn't fall. Clean this off a little bit. Could use an old piece of cardboard to do this next step. Actually, where's my little broom? Clean up my mess here. Actually, let's use a towel. Clean off my table here. Clean me off. Me, I would break down and break down with the blower, but I'm not going to. Make sure you're using a clean rag to wipe off your helmet or your part that you're using, so that needs bondoing. I'm just doing a helmet because it's what I have here. Um, I do have uh, a donate box, or if you want to donate to the uh, uh, getting part fund or you want me to do something special on a live stream one day if you want to donate towards that you can you could always donate towards uh, doing a uh, uh, giveaway of sorts if you want uh, there's a should be a uh, PayPal account in in the bottom of the description below so if there's not I'll uh, put it in later in the comment section so y'all can do that if you like. And let me get my piece of cardboard that I'm going to be using. I got plenty of cardboard. Like this. This is a little long, so I'm going to. I don't need much. Use that cardboard later if I need to. My garbage can over here. Okay. Since I know how much putty I'm going to use, um, because I feel I know where all the low spots are, I'm also going to fill in all these pits that I see here. Uh, get my uh, putty knife or my uh, bondo spreader. Make sure it's nice and clean is what I can get it to be. My hardener, make sure it's not outdated. Uh, to mix it, you just want to rub it in a little bit. Like so. Because if you do have these sit for a while, it does not want to work properly. And this, this uh, Bondo is actually, or this hardener is actually white. I like the red so you can actually see what you, you have been done and what hasn't been done on a white panel. But if you're working on a dark panel, use a white hardener. Move this 150 grit out of the way here. Buddy, I, I use an all-purpose buddy that you can get at any auto, automotive shop. Be careful, the fumes are hazardous to your health, so be careful, don't ever point this towards you. Oddly enough, the stand is on my toolbox. So pardon me a minute while I get my uh, cutter out. Oh, 
Oops. That's why you're sitting at the ground, or pointed at the ground a second. Here, let me uh, put you back. That's why I keep my toolbox on hand. Oh, there goes my charger cord. So my, my, my power doesn't go out on you. Well, I'm waiting for this. This part I would recommend using having a dolt with you. Make sure your hands are away from you when you do this. Because this putty knife is so big, you can use it to pull out new putty. putty. I can make smaller putties. Like so. Easier. That or if I need to spread over a small area, I'm going to keep this like this because that's the smallest one I need for like spreading in weird spots, like the spot up here in the front. I can uh, use this to go over like this and it'll fill in those spots for myself. Close the knife, have it locked. So you don't accidentally open it on yourself. And we're going to mix the putty now. Got my handy dandy cheap affordable uh, putty holder. Because, hey, cardboard's cheap. And if you're under the age of 15, recommend having a parent or guardian help you with this so you don't accidentally hurt yourself I'm going to use a small amount this time clean this off so I don't get it on my hands I'm going to actually put gloves on it now so I don't get this putty stuff on my hands when I go to use the sandpaper because I actually like my hands to be clean for when I go to feel what I need to do. So I do have some disposable Gorilla gloves right here. I also use this for stripping but I re wouldn't recommend it for you all because if you're not used to the feeling of getting a uh, having the, the the chemical go go through your gloves. I would recommend getting some kitchen gloves that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Those big bulky ones that come down here that are yellow, those are thicker gloves I would recommend using. So to mix this up, I'm gonna still use I'm gonna use a smaller one here so I don't get that one contaminated anymore. So let's put this in here. And when you put when you have a uh, putty like this, make sure it's in a nice round pile so you know how much putty that you have. I normally do this only because I'm showing this for demonstration purposes now. See how it's nice and round? You want to, so you don't use too much, go from the middle. To the outside. You don't want to use any more than that because then it will harden too quickly on you. And you don't want that. Especially while you're mixing it. So, like, like you see here, it's from the middle to the out. Now you mix it. If you put too much harder in it, this will fill up or harden really quickly. You don't put too, if you put not enough in, it won't harden quick enough so you can sand it. So, now I got that part done. Because 
this will stick to your gloves. It's the reason why I recommend doing this with gloves. Actually, let's do it with this one here. Grab a small bit. Cut around that hole here. Since I need to fill in bigger holes, grab my bigger one. Don't need that much. I curve it to match the helmet. So it fills in the holes that I need to fill in. just like that. Then I'm going to go over to the holes over here, since I got some putty left over, and fill in these. Clean off the putty side that I've been using. Grab the smaller one. Hopefully I've got enough time still. Should shape this uh, helmet to where I want it to. Oops. sand as much. I want it smooth. So, now all I have to do is wait till it dries, which hopefully won't be long, and then we can start sanding on this again with the 80 grit. Now I'm going to clean off this putty while I wait for this thing to dry. reuse the other side. That's the reason why I'm not getting rid of the, uh, the cardboard here. Because if you were using uh, actually, I actually have something called, uh, I think, uh, a putty board. Yeah. I got a putty board out there where you could just rip off a piece of paper and then go with the next one. Just throw away the other one. 
make sure when you do throw it away, it's in a contaminated bag. So you actually, I'd say you could throw it away in a regular garbage bag. But, you know, I mean, I like to make sure it goes in the right spot, technically. Okay. Grab my putty knife here. My flat edge putty knife. Make sure I have a nice straight edge on this. flat edge that you want. Lock it back up, put it away, and we'll go and check this thing. Don't need my gloves anymore. I don't want my garbage can over here. Oh, it's starting to dry. It'll become as a little dull, but right now it's sticky, and it's not done being hard, it hasn't hardened the way. means I didn't add enough hardener to it because I wanted to get it on there perfectly, so I have to wait until it's dry. Um, this is why body shops, when they put Bondo on, that's why they have more than one car to work on. Um, other than that, they want to make sure your car actually is as perfect as it was when you first bought it. Um, that's not saying a lot because most of the Nissans I've worked on before, uh, even right out of right off coming off the line, uh, how how they transport those vehicles over off of a back of a truck, and you see those brand new vehicles come off the new, the, new, the, the the truck that's brand new. I've seen some of those go into a body shop and just pick, pick some dents and stuff. So make sure when you buy a car that you make sure you check what actually has happened to it before you buy it. Because some of them actually do get paint work that redone like the bumpers. And, and you can tell if the bumpers haven't been painted right because they'll be two-toned instead of uh, matching the car properly. That's why I always check when I go buy cars, I make sure what the body hit or what the history is, and make sure it doesn't uh, have any damage on it from before, or if it has damage, if it's not a critical damage. But what I mean by critical damage is if it has had a frame hit. I want to make sure the frame is in the position where it was when it came to the manufacturer. If it has a subframe, make sure the subframe isn't bent. That's why I would re recommend taking it to a mechanic. Uh, find a mechanic that you uh, like. Uh, like I have one that fixes all my cars when I can't do it in, in the automotive sense. But they can also tell you if you had frame damage. I don't like to see people buy cars that have frame damage because it, it basically messes up with your alignment when you go drive down the road. Um, but if, if you like this video, please hit that like button. I always, uh, YouTube's actually been helping me. I started streaming because of the fact that I had trouble talking to people and people from understanding me. I'm, uh, I'm getting better, but I'm still not there yet. If you notice, sometimes I talk with my hands. That's, that's my way of trying to communicate things like, the, the verity of certain aspects of a car. I hate to see cars that have been wrecked or have body damage on them. That means that, that their owner hasn't been taking care of the car. Like, I went, like the other day, I was at, at the store and I see this car that has duct tape on it, on the bumper. A bumper is maybe like 
Uh, if you buy a brand new bumper that, that's aftermarket, you could probably spend maybe close to $200 on it. And you'd probably get somebody at a body shop to install it for you. Uh, just make sure you have all the, they'll, they'll make sure you have all your clips that you need. And they'll make sure it's on properly so you don't have to use duct tape to hold up a bumper. But if you're low on budget, and you need help trying to do something and you live in Connecticut, uh, just hit, hit my page up. I'll probably be able to help you. I'll do what I can, best of my knowledge and best of my ability. Um, but I don't like seeing fogged headlights because that means your, your headlights aren't performing the way they're supposed to be. Um, fogged headlights also reduces your chance of being seen. They also have a problem with uh, when you're going down the road and you have like halogens and they're not working properly and you're wondering why, but they're on and you notice that your headlights are glared all the time and not functioning to their proper ability. It means the, the acid rain has put a fog on your lens between the uh, acid rain the salt rock, the salt rock salt and, and all the chemicals they use on the road nowadays during the winter will actually tint out your your headlights which is never good and those people that actually get tints on their headlights really do not understand the reason why you have headlights apparently because those headlights are there to, to keep you safe at night so you could actually drive down the road and actually not have a problem not seeing animals other vehicles, uh, trees that might be in your way during a rainstorm or anything like that. So if you have any questions about how to uh, get your headlights done properly, I'll be happy to help. I can give you tips and tricks on how to do it properly. That doesn't cost a fortune. Like if I do it, it's only going to cost you like $15. Oh, that's almost almost dry but if I do it it's only because I have the materials here I can do it with if you ever like to see a high, how, live how-to video on how to do a headlight restoration I'll be happy to help just leave a comment in the section below and I'll be happy to do so um, I did it to my stepdad's car I still need to do it to my mom's car I could do it to other people's vehicles it's not a problem it won't, it won't hurt your, your uh, headlights either. Um, but let's get back to sanding this thing. Getting the uh, sandpaper off of here and get it ready to uh, be sanded. And for those people that actually play video games, like the PlayStation 4 or Xbox, Xbox One or Xbox 360, those people, and there's still games out there you could probably get um, for your X, your PlayStation 2 or, or PlayStation 3 or whatever that has live and whatnot. Um, I will be doing a $10 gift card giveaway starting September 1st through the 6th. You can enter in on it. Uh, all you have to do is go to the uh, welcome to my page video on YouTube. Uh, it's Auto Body Men and at YouTube.com. And all you have to do is go to that video, go down to the comment section, and look for the $10 gift card for PlayStation or $10 gift card for Xbox. And you can enter it into those starting September 1st. So, um, I hope, hope this is dry now. I'm about to check it and we'll get back to doing this. Okay. Start off with this hole over here. It's a small section, don't have to worry about much. Always do that cross pattern. Oop, almost forgot my respirator. I caught myself this time.
almost perfect. I'll have to go back over with it by, by do, just doing it with my hand because the block's too big for certain areas like like right here by this uh, silver part where the, 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 the buckle goes into from the other side. Uh, I'm going to have to go over it by hand so it gets perfect to where I want it. And looks like I missed a spot. Since it's dry enough, I can actually start sanding on it. Now that I got it as smooth as I'm gonna get with the 80 grit, I'm gonna switch over to the one the 120 grit. To do that, I'm gonna have to remove move my 80 grit from my uh, handy dandy sander here. And since I can reuse this 80 grit later, take it off and put it aside for later, since I didn't get using that much. Now I'm gonna open this. 120 grit that I got here. It's a little finer than, it's like a medium grade fine and it, it's good for like wood and um, some other purpose stuff. 220 is better for wood. But this is like, thin, this is thinner than, uh, than that 80 grit that we were using. So this will get ready for paint. And 
that's what we want. Get ready for paint. So what we're going to do, I'm showing you this part on the top half, and then I'll show you how to basically fill in those holes afterwards. Um, but I want to show you this real quick, just in case you all have to go. If you do, I'm sorry that you have to leave, and if you want to come back to this video later, you can. Um, it won't be live, but that way you could actually go back and forth and make sure you actually, if you miss something in the step process, you can go back and look over it. Uh, get this set up. Now we'll uh, start sanding with the uh, two twenty, the one twenty grit. getting a bunch here and I was wondering why. It's because the sandpaper was off. I was kept getting a bunch here if you had a hard time seeing me. I kept getting a bunch here and I found out that the sandpaper was kind of cock, uh, cocked wrong. So uh, I resetted it and now we're ready to go.
Okay. Next time, hopefully, I'll have all this bondoed in for you. So, uh, we can get ready for paint. And uh, next Saturday, I will be streaming how to uh, seal this bodywork into before we paint. And hopefully, you could tune in for that. Other than that, I hope, if you notice, that everything is as smooth as I want it to be. That's what the 120 grit does. I might go over with this with the 220 so I can get even smoother than this so I can actually seal this properly. Other than that, that that's all the time we have today for the live stream for showing you how to sand. This is Auto Body Man sand. I hope you have an Auto Body Day.